Hey guys, this is Juliana and I'm going to continue with the next type of poetry and it is the poetry of family. An even more grounded strain of poetry locates the poetic subject in a matrix of belonging to family, to community and changing traditions. Often the traditions called into play are ethnic or international. In some poets, the respect for family and community carries with it a sense of affirmation if not an explicitly devotional sensibility. This is not a conservative poetry. Often it confronts change, loss and struggle with the powers of ethnic or non-Western literary tradition. One of the most famous poets of family is Lee Young Lee. He wrote the city in which I love you and his poets place vanished. My citizenship errant, in league with stones of the earth, I enter without retreat or help from history. The days of no day, my earth of no earth, I re-enter. The next type of poetry that we have is the poetry of the beautiful. This poetry celebrates beauty despite modern life and all its suffering and confusion. Some of the finest contemporary poets use imagery not as a decoration, but to explore new subjects and terrain. Mark Dotti was one of the most famous poets of the beautiful. Some are li a little rabbit dead in the grass and fish are us. That his poems are both reflexive and responsive to the outer world. He sees the imperfect yet vital body, especially the skin, as the margin, a kind of text where internal and external meet. Then we have the poetry of spirit. And a spiritual focus terminates another strand of contemporary American poetry. In this work, the deepest relationship is that between the individual and a timeless essence beyond. Jane Hirschfeld makes almost no explicit reference in her poems of spirit, yet they breathe the spirit of her many years of sing meditation in her translations from the ancient court poetry of two Japanese women. Hirschfeld's poem Neil Hart from her poetry collection The Lives of the Heart in 1987 vividly evokes a mule without ever mentioning it. Now we have poetry of nature. The new world riveted the attention of Americans during the revolutionary era of the late 70s when Philip Reno made a point of celebrating flora and fauna native to Americans as a way to create an American identity. Today, environmental concerns inform a powerful strain of ecologically oriented U.S. poetry. One of nature was Mary Oliver, a stunning accessible poet Oliver evokes plants and animals with visionary intensity. Oliver finds meaning in encounters with nature. Continue, continue the transcendental tradition of Harry David. And her work has a strong ethical image. The Poetry of Wit. Poetry of Wit locates the poetic occasion in everyday life raised to a humorous, surrealistic, or allegorical pitch. Usually the language is colloquial, so that the fantastic situations have the help of reality. The everyday language humor, surprising action, and exaggeration of this poetry makes it initially accessible through the best of this work only gives up its secrets on repeated rereading. Billy Collins was the most influential of the poets of which today. Collins uses everyday language to record the myriad 
details of everyday life, really mixing foodish and events with cultural, cultural references. He wrote the poem The Dead and it says the dead are, are always look, looking at down on us. They say while we are putting on our shoes or making a sandwich, they are looking down through the glass bottom boat of heaven as they know themselves slowly through eternity. We also have the poetry of history. Poetry inspired by history in some ways the most difficult and ambitious of all. An older poet working in this vein is Michael Harper, who interweaves African American stories, experiences in a form of Montag. Frank Bidart has similarly merged political events such as the assassination of the U.S. President Job F. Kennedy with personal life. Among the most accomplished of the poets of history is Robert Pinsky, U.S. poet from 1997 to 2000. Pinsky links colloquial speech to technical virtuosity. Some of his masterpieces were Explanation of America in 1979 and In History of My Heart in 1984. Then we have the poetry of the world. This is a downbeat of or outcast poetry that at first reading seems antipoetical. Nevertheless, the best of this poetry cuts through multiple perspectives, questions the very notion of personal identity and understands suffering from an ethical perspective. And the last one is cyber poetry. At the extreme end of the poetic spectrum, cyber poetry is a new worldly poetry. So now we are going to continue with the analysis of the piece of literature that we chose. And it's named One Art by Elizabeth Bishop. 